I'm Sarah. And I'm David. Welcome to Campus Sense. A program about common sense and campus safety. Each year, when classes begin again, the last thing on anyone's mind is concern for their personal safety or protection of their property. In actuality, it should be one of the first. Let's face it, going away to college is probably one of the most different living experiences you'll ever encounter. It's an exciting time of new friends, new freedoms, new experiences, and some important new responsibilities to a new community, your campus. The reality of campus living is that, in terms of personal safety, each student needs to be aware, very savvy about what is going on around them. A recent survey reported that one out of every three women and one out of every five men experienced a threat to either their personal safety or to their property during the previous academic year. 49% reported that such threats interfered with their ability to perform at their academic best. College is a demanding, challenging, and expensive encounter with education, learning, and living. Safety issues should never compromise any of that. Every college and university makes an effort to provide its students with safety tips, precautions, methods, guides, and well-trained campus security organizations. However, each student must take on the responsibility of putting that help into action. Help us help you. Turn common sense into campus sense. There are some shrewd and intelligent safety tips that are very simple and effective to put into practice. Common safety precautions that should become second nature to every student. Crime is no stranger to on-campus living. Burglary, larceny, and petty theft, as well as the chance of an assault by an intruder or stranger, can happen right where you live. The first rule of campus safety is to be aware. Report what happens when you see it, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. Communicate with someone. Take responsibility. It can be done anonymously. Just do it. Someone may be very thankful that you did, and that someone may be you. Everybody's got a room and a roommate, where common courtesy and privacy need to coexist. So too do common safety precautions and the need to look out for one another. Make sure you and your roommate are on the same wavelength. Campus theft is a crime of opportunity. Don't make it easy for it to happen. Don't bring home, here. Valuables that don't belong at school shouldn't be here. Jewelry, expensive watches, heirlooms, don't bring them. They'll only invite unwanted problems. And make sure your window is locked, especially if there is an outside fire escape or balcony. And with a sliding door, prop it closed with a dowel in the lower track. Keep money, credit cards, checkbooks, tools, equipment, cameras, or even laptops out of sight. Time is a thief's greatest enemy. Don't allow him to see what you have and then to grab and dash with your property. Common sense says stow it or you may lose it. Whenever you leave your room, always lock the door. Even if you're just going down the hall for a quick second, don't invite easy access to your room. Remember, campus theft is a crime of opportunity and needs you to provide that opportunity. And when you do leave for longer periods of time, don't leave a note on your door to advertise that no one's home. Worse yet, don't leave your key obviously hidden above the door frame. Notes and keys are best left with your resident assistant. And never loan a room key to anyone, even a friend. Your locked door will never be safe again if that key was duplicated or has fallen into the hands of the wrong person. Be on guard. If you suspect that your key has been somehow compromised, report it and have the lock changed. On your residence hall floor, create a buddy system. Remember that safety thrives when everyone is in on it together. Let others know about your comings and goings, who's visiting you or who's visiting them, or anyone you've seen in the residence hall who looks out of place. Maybe just share a safety tip like, don't sign in anyone you don't know. Never leave a door propped open or ajar, and if you find one that way, close it and report the incident immediately. And never open a door for someone you don't know. One, one of the things that I'd, I'd like people to understand is that uh, crime does happen. Wherever you have people, crime occurs. Uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. 
but there are some simple things that people can do to prevent these things from happening. And it's not just security's responsibility, it's everyone's responsibility. So sure, we're here to help, but we can't do it without receiving help in return. Many people will tell us that they don't call because they thought something wasn't important. But we'd like to hear about the little things. We'd like to address problems before they become large and very uncomfortable for people. But security is largely the business of prevention. And we try and prevent uh, uh, problems, be it, be it crime problems or be it uh, injury to people, uh, through establishing certain safeguards. Uh, and, and these can be uh, policies, procedures, physical controls. Uh, all designed to prevent incidents. And of course, some of what we do is respond to incidents. Now, people are well trained to respond to these incidents, but what we'd like to do for real success is not to have an incident happen in the first place. In order to do that, we need people's help. We can't do it alone. Security can't be everywhere at all times. There's uh, just too many buildings, uh, campuses are much too large. Uh, we can't be everywhere. And so as a result, we count on members of the community to be an uh, integral part of the prevention effort. Okay, Sarah, residence hall life. How do we keep it safe? All right, first, report what you see, even the little things. Keep windows and doors locked at all times. Hide all valuables and lock down electronics. Don't let strangers in and never prop a door open. College students are always on the go not only on campus, but all over town. By foot, bicycle, car, public transit, or college bus service, students are traveling at all hours of the day and night. And when they do travel, more than likely, they're accompanied by that universal college companion, the backpack. No doubt, chock full of books, clothes, cash, credit cards, checks, calculators, cameras, and other assorted goodies. Prime pickings for the dishonest. Now the rule of thumb here is to keep your backpack on your back, or at least slung over a shoulder, and keep it closed. Get on an elevator with it open and someone will pick it clean. Other than with you, the only safe havens for a backpack are in a locked locker, in your room, or under the watchful gaze of a friend. Left alone at a library, laboratory, classroom, cafeteria, or some other public place, the lifespan of a backpack can be very limited. Stolen goods can be replaced, but what about research materials, papers, floppy disks, the irreplaceable hours of valuable work snatched up along with the backpack? So, David, how do I keep my backpack and its contents safe? First off, never leave it unattended or unsecured. When it's on your back or off, always keep it closed and be careful with it in crowds. Safety concerns involving personal threats, harassment, sexual attacks, rapes, date rapes, muggings, and violence are predominantly issues of greatest concern with campus women. National surveys report that nearly 80% of all women encounter a sexual attack in their lifetime. At college, one in four women at four-year institutions has reported at least one sexual attack during her undergraduate years. Fully 90% of all co-eds report that sexual attacks are their number one safety concern. Addressing that fear and taking control of your environment can have positive results in eliminating a criminal's opportunity to make you a victim. When on foot, make yourself a tough target. Move confidently and assertively. Look around yourself. Be aware. Send out positive body language that you're savvy and not fearful. Would-be attackers seek easy targets. They'd rather avoid taking risks with someone who looks prepared. Whistles, personal alarms, mace, pepper spray and other safety devices can be helpful backups, but nothing can replace awareness and avoidance, like avoiding an ATM machine after dark, or like avoiding confrontation with a robber. Give up your money and property and get out of there fast. Your instincts, your gut feeling should be relied upon as your early warning system. That little voice in the back of your mind. If some place looks bad, don't go there. If someone looks strange, avoid him or her. All it takes is simple common sense. Use it. Campus safety councils and campus security organizations conduct awareness and self-defense programs. A popular and effective training session like a padded attacker class will teach you physical and mental self-defense techniques. Make it your business to attend one or all of these sessions. If you are walking or jogging, don't do it alone, especially at night. 
bring a friend or friends. The buddy system is just common sense that there is always greater safety in numbers. If you must travel alone on campus, take a little extra precaution. Never wear a personal stereo system. You need your ears to help you stay aware. Always walk in well-lit areas. Never shortcut down alleyways or through dark places with trees or bushes. Stay in the middle of the sidewalk, frequently looking ahead or back over your shoulder for potential stalkers. If you feel uncomfortable about someone, cross the street, head for a public place, get to some place where you do feel comfortable. Don't allow yourself to be intimidated by the situation. Communicate. Call someone. Don't take any chances. Simple measures taken at the right time can deny a criminal the opportunity to make you a victim. Stay uh, away from the risky situations, watch your location, stay in a well-lit area, make sure that uh, you don't put yourself at risk. And the way to put yourself at risk is when you're not alert, you don't know where you are, you're not, you're, you're off in Never Never Land thinking about something else. Get to know who your friends are, use your gut instincts, uh, uh, watch behaviors and attitudes of individuals, stick with individuals that are similar to your lifestyle. Again, avoid risky situations. And we all know what that risky situation is. It's the one where you're the hair in the back of your head stands up. And if it stands up before you walk into it, walk away. When possible, use the campus bus service to get you close to your destination. Ask the driver to call ahead to have someone from the campus escort service meet you at the bus stop. If the campus has no bus system, call ahead to the college escort service for someone to meet you at a prearranged location. Don't be embarrassed or poo-poo it. The escort service is there for a purpose and it is effective. All right, David, can you give us some personal safety pointers? Sure can. Be aware, confident, and make yourself a tough target. Traveling in groups is always safest. Avoid dark, uncomfortable looking shortcuts. Rely on your instincts to help you out. Whenever possible, use the campus transit and escort services. Sexual harassment, either in person, by phone, or by other means, acquaintance rape and date rape are gruesome aspects of campus subculture. In almost all cases, the victim and the perpetrator are known, or even well known, to one another. The term date rape is used to define sexual assault by two people that know each other. Um, we use the word date rape, acquaintance rape, and we often talk about stranger rape as being somehow different. What we know is that date rape is much more common than stranger rape, with 65% of all rapes being date rapes, and with the remainder 35% being stranger rapes. For the age group of college age students, which is defined as 15 to 24, what we know is the date rape statistic goes up to 84% of all assaults that occur are considered date rape or between two people that know each other. Um, it, is no, it is no worse than stranger rape. Date rape is just more prevalent. But what we know is oftentimes when date rape occurs, the victim is much less likely to report the rape than if it's a stranger rape because somehow she or he feels more responsible because they knew the person. The question of how we can prevent rape is tricky. Ultimately, the responsibility of rape is in the hands of the rapist, and if we truly want to prevent rape, rapists need to stop raping. Since we know that we live in a type of culture where rape exists, there are steps we need to take, though, to keep ourselves safe. To begin with, we've already talked a little bit about our inner voice, about that voice inside us that says, I don't feel safe, I don't trust this person, I'm not comfortable at this party, I'm not familiar with these surroundings. When that voice goes off and lets you know you're not safe, what you need to do is listen to that voice. You need to remove yourself from that situation, remove yourself from that party. Other steps we need to take are, we know that drugs and alcohol don't cause rape, but what we do know is that when you, one's drinking or doing drugs, they're not tuning in to what their gut response might be to their environment. And in essence, they're putting themselves at greater risk for being assaulted. So either refrain from using drugs or alcohol, or be aware of your surroundings and develop a buddy system when going out in a party type situation. Rape awareness and sexual assault prevention programs are offered on many campuses. Meeting in groups, talking with other women, and getting good advice and counsel is vitally important in learning how to deal with any crisis situation. And if in a crisis, call. Don't go it alone. Call campus security. 
your counselor, or your resident assistant. They are all trained and ready to help you. Here are a few reminders that may help. If you meet someone new, double date or group date at first. Drink much less, or better yet, none at all. Self-defense training can prepare you physically and mentally. And if it's no, then say it clearly and really mean it. And guys, don't let a date turn into a prison sentence. Common sense precautions can eliminate most of the hassles of having a car on campus. Drive with all locks locked at all times, especially the driver's side door. Most carjackings happen when the driver's side door is left unlocked. Parking lots are notorious places for rip-offs. Auto theft, stolen goods, vandalism, holdups, and assaults. Anything of value stolen in the trunk before you get into the parking lot. Leave nothing in the interior that's easy pickings. And ladies, take that pocketbook off the front seat and put it on the floor. Always lock your car. 25% of all stolen cars had the keys left in the ignition or the doors had been left unlocked. And if you return to find someone at your car, please go the other way. Property can be replaced. You can. Use an emergency call box. Believe me, help will come faster than you might think. Remember to keep all locks locked at all times. Keep all valuables out of sight. The trunk is best. Always park in well-lit areas. Don't ever put yourself into personal jeopardy. The highest density of bicycles is on a college campus. Is it any wonder then that they are popular targets for thieves? Chains or cables are no match for bolt cutters. Case-hardened steel locking devices are best. Make sure that when you do secure your bike, both the wheel and frame are locked down. Remove the seat or one wheel if necessary and take it with you to class. Engraving identification numbers on bicycles is popular, but has not proven to be an effective method in recovery. A stolen bicycle can be repainted and all engravings easily removed in the space of one afternoon. Deter the theft and you save your valuable property. It's as simple as that. Without question, a controversial issue today at college involves what else? Drinking. No matter what one's personal beliefs are about the consumption of alcoholic beverages, the fact is that it goes on in a big way and will, more than likely, continue. First, let's put some perspective to the situation. According to the Office for Substance Abuse Prevention of the Department of Health and Human Services, college students annually spend $5.5 billion on alcoholic beverages. That's more than the operating expenses of all college and university libraries as well as all scholarship and fellowship programs combined. That's 430 million gallons of alcohol per year enough to fill one Olympic-sized swimming pool for every university and college in America. Alcohol can greatly compromise the quality of life of a student on a college campus. One of the ways is that as a new freshman, if you're coming into a campus where there's a lot of binge drinking going on and a lot of partying and drinking, and you're not prepared for that, one, you can get yourself in trouble very quickly. You can put yourself in a situation where your little inner voice goes to sleep and you're not protecting yourself you're not paying attention to a danger you might be in. Um, you're compromised. If you're a woman, the chance of sexual assault or date rape are extremely high when you're drinking. And that's one of the cautions, particularly for freshman women. Another issue is what goes on in your dorm. If you've got roommates or people around you who are drinking constantly, who are drunk constantly, then your ability to study and sleep can be greatly disrupted. Many people ask whether binge drinking is worse today than it was in the past. In fact, it's not. They're the same percentage of students binging. The problem is they're binging by drinking more alcohol, they're drinking with the express purpose of getting drunk, and they're playing very dangerous drinking games. For example, on a 21st birthday, it's typical on most college campuses to demand that a student drink 21 shots of alcohol if they can. That's a lethal dose of alcohol. That basically can kill someone. There are lots of drinking games that are culturally acceptable on college campuses that are dangerous. So students need to work with one another to realize that this is not okay. This is not the kind of behavior that they want to participate in. Whether you live in a large city, a small town, or a college campus, you don't live in a vacuum. Wherever people interact, things happen. And some of those things may be direct threats to your personal safety or the protection of your property. Okay, Sarah. 
What do you feel are some of the most important tips you've learned about campus safety? That's easy. For me, it would have to be the following. First off, take some responsibility for your community, the campus. Then be alert to your surroundings and report what you see. Oh, then there's lock, 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 lock everything in sight. Lock your residence hall, lock your car, lock your bike, even lock your backpack. How about go with your instincts? Listen to that little voice, especially in an unsafe place or with an unsafe person. Absolutely, and with that, if you do have a problem, get to a phone, call security, get some help. Every campus security force, as well as local and state police, try their utmost to safeguard and protect you from crime. But they can't be everywhere and be everything to everybody. Help them help you. All it takes is a call. Please call, okay? Get a little campus sense. See you around campus.